Welcome to the lesson activities for section 9.2 for Math 117. Consider a population that grows linearly following the recursive formula p sub n is equal to p sub n minus 1 minus 29 with initial population of 671. Find p1, p2, and p3. Okay, so p1, if I use this formula, p sub 1 should be equal to p sub, I'm replacing all my n's with 1's, so I replaced that n with a 1, so I'm going to replace that n with a 1. So I have 1 minus 1 minus 29. So p sub 1 is equal to p sub 0 minus 29, and p sub 0 I was given, p sub 0 is 671. So P1 is 671 minus 29, which is 642. So there's P1, 642. Okay, and then P2 is the previous number in the list, P1 minus 29. So that's 613. And then P3 is the previous number in the list, 613 minus 29, which is 584. So now we want to give an explicit formula for P sub n. So what we were given was recursive because it uses the previous numbers in the list. An explicit formula would say, okay, well, P sub n is equal to I start with P0, 671, and I repeatedly subtract 29. I repeatedly subtract 29. So I'm going to subtract 29 multiple times over and over and over again. Repeated subtraction is multiplication. So minus 29 times N. So to find P23, I can use my explicit formula. It's 671 minus 29 times 23. So that comes out to four. Okay, now we wanna consider a population that grows linearly. I've given P7 and P10, and I wanna figure out P0. Okay, so let's make a little chart. So N and P sub N, zero, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm making a chart all the way up to ten because ten is one of the numbers that I know. It's the bigger one. Okay, so I know P7 is 25 and P10 is 31. And because they told me that this grows linearly, that means you're always adding the same amount to get to the next number in the list. So to get from 25 to 31, I would add 6. But to break it down, into it takes 1, 2, 3 steps to get there. So I'm going to add 2 at a time instead of 6 all at once. So 25 plus 2 is 27, plus 2 is 29, plus 2 is 31. And then to go backwards, I would subtract 2. So I have 23, 21, 19, 17, 15, 13, 11. So P sub 0 is 11. And then an explicit formula would be P sub n equals, well, I'm starting at 11, and I'm adding 2 to every step. So I'm at plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. Repeatedly adding 2 is multiplying by 2 n times. So you're going to add 2 n times, so that's plus 2 times n. Find P200. I'm going to use the explicit formula. I could extend the chart until I get a 200 down here, but like that would be a really long chart. So instead, I'll use the explicit formula 11 plus 2 times 200, so that would be 411. 
Use the arithmetic sum formula to find the following sum. Okay, so the arithmetic sum formula says add the first term and the last term. So that's 2 plus 47. Multiply that by the number of terms, which we were given in this case to be 90, and then divide by 2. So 2 plus 47, that's 49, times 90, divided by 2, is 2,205. Unemployment rates for a certain country are published at the end of every month. For the period of October 2011 through January 2012, the unemployment rates were 7.3, 7, 6.7, 7, and 6.4. We're going to assume that the rates continue to decrease following a linear model, and we want to predict the unemployment rate at the end of March 2013. Okay, so let's see. We're going to have, I'm going to make a little table, date, um, and then N value, and then unemployment. So we'll call this U sub N. Okay, so October was the first, October 2011, so 10, 2011. The unemployment rate was 7.3. And then we have a November, December, and January 2012. So that's 7, 6.7, and 6.4. And let's call this zero. Um, the first measurement we took will have n, n, n equals zero. And then we have 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so the end of March 2013, so let's see, we have 2, 2012, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3. So March 2013 is way down here. So I need to figure out that N value. So I'm going to count. So this is going to be, this is 3. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So the N value of 17 is the one that I want. Okay, so we're going to assume that these keep going down in a linear fashion, which means that we're going to keep subtracting 0 0.3. 7.3 minus 0 0.3 is 7, minus 0 0.3 is 6.7, minus 0 0.3 is 6.4. 6 .4. So my next one would be 6.1 and then 5.8, etc. Okay, so let's see if I can come up with a formula that might help me answer this question. So if I have a explicit formula, I'm going to say, well, my first unemployment recording is 7.3. And then I'm going to keep subtracting 0.3 over and over n times. So minus 0.3 n. And what I want to know is P sub 17. The 17th measurement is going to be in March 2013. That's the one I'm interested in. So I do 7.3 minus 0.3 times 17. And that comes out to 2.5. Okay, now we want to predict when the country will reach a zero unemployment rate. So when, that's going to be my n, and p sub n, I'm going to make that zero. So I'm going to set zero equal to 7.3 minus 0.3 n and solve for the n. So I have 0.3 n equals 7.3, divide by 0.3, divide by 0.3, cancels. So we get n equals... 7.3 divided by 0.3 is 24 and a third. 24.3 repeating. So it's not going to hit um, zero. It'll hit zero somewhere between n equals 24 and 25. <clears throat> so 24 months 
after we begin. So if we begin in 2011, October 2011, 24 months later is October 2013. But um, the numbers are published at the end of the month, so it's not going to happen in October because it happens a little bit after the 24th month. It happens in, in sometime in the next month, 0.3 into it. So that's going to happen not in October 2013, but in the next month, November 2013.